Welcome to today's 3D print. Let's talk about the evil that is Angus Devison. <laughs> So, Angus, Maker's Muse, made a new torture test. You probably just saw Joel's. That multi-color one is awesome, and I especially love that custom protopasta he got. That's, I want some of that. That yellow, purple, gold, orange, is, and red is just, mm, that's nice. So, this is his egg challenge. Now, the reason this is a challenge is because of how it prints. This is the last one I printed. All the big ones were easy. The little one was a pain in the freaking butt. And so far, I can only get the Ender 2 to do it. So, next size up from that is this one. This is actually printed on the Tivo Michelangelo. Now, as you can see, this looks a bit different. That's because it's actually three shells. And you can see in here, there are three different shells inside there. And they need to be able to rotate. So you can see the three rings go all the way to the bottom here. One, two, and three. And this is in Atomic Filaments True Gold. So here you can see the three different shells. Now because it prints like this, you have a tolerance issue here. Now most printers, even cheap printers, won't have any problems with that tolerance, even at the small size. The only way I see you having a problem with the tolerance itself is if you over extrude. What's going to bite you though is not um, the tolerance. What's going to bite you is your zitting. If those zits where you start and stop a layer occur in between these two petals, it's going to adhere the two petals together. Now, one or two zits, no big deal. You just push on it, it'll pop free. A hundred zits, and a hundred more here, and a hundred more here, and a hundred more here, and um, yeah, you're going to need power tools to get it apart. <laughs> so, um, this was on the Michelangelo. So then I tried to print one on the JG Aurora A5 in Zyro's Twinkling Red. And this one also freed up. It's no achievement to free up these large ones because the, the gap is so large that you can actually stick a tool in there to help clean it out. Um, this is particularly beautiful. So for example, on these bigger ones, you could take something like this put it in between the layers like this and clean them out so it's not a problem but that's not big enough no 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 no. that's nowhere near big enough so I went absolutely ginormous <laughs> I could probably put this one in here and can I fit this one in that one mm, I don't think so it's not gonna let me almost <laughs> But it's big enough to put a 200% scale one fits inside of this 500% scale one. This is printed on the CR-10S. This thing is simply huge. I want to go 600% or 700% I think it is. It's I don't know how big it would be. It would be much, much bigger on my Alphawise U10, but it's giving me a problem. I'm waiting for a replacement part. So the 400 millimeters is the biggest I can print this right now. But yeah, not bad. Um, I of course did this in Zyro Rose Pink. I love this color, it's nice. This is Shun Plastics Blue. S-C-H-O-O-N. This is Zyro, that's also Zyro. And this is Atomic Filament's True Gold. But yeah, fun print. I mean, if you, if you just want something cool to print and you don't wanna have to fight it, just print it 200%. You know, print it this size. You shouldn't have any problems cleaning this up well enough to be able to pull the layers apart. It's no big deal. Printing it, you want a challenge, print it at 100%, you know, full, normal scale. That's a challenge. That's a, it's a, it's a fun one. Especially for these cheaper printers, which um, don't have the, quite the tolerances and accuracies of nicer printers, but they can work. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed that. This is a little short one. I just wanted to get these out there since it's, Easter now, and um, although this doesn't really matter, he just made it egg shaped because of what when during the year it was. But this is just one of his little torture tests. So this would actually, you know, this would actually look pretty cool as a lamp. I can see having that mount to the ceiling, and a bulb would fit in there. This would fit over top of an E27 mount, I think. <laughs> you guys just might see this in the future as a lamp. 
and you can if you did this in a uh, darker filament you can actually control the amount of light by controlling how many petals were covering the bulb so you can have lots of light or you can have medium amount of light or block even more of the light by having all three petals spread out so you can actually control your light diffusion and color temperature so put a cold white bulb in here with a yellow egg and you would be able to soften the color of the light based on how much of the plastic was in front of or not in front of the bulb. That's actually pretty cool. I might have to design a lampshade specifically to do just that. Hey Angus, you just gave me a good idea. So, there you go. You guys have a great day. Thank you for watching my videos. And as a small update, um, with the assistance of the Marlin crew and Real Sexy Cyborg, Naomi Wu, they were able to get through to Creality. And so a little update for you guys on that. Apparently the story they gave about um, purchasing the firmware from a third party company which they were paying royalty to was actually accurate. They actually were. Basically, somebody else robbed them <laughs> by selling them free firmware and keeping it proprietary to themselves so they can continue to charge them for the firmware. And they have secured the release of the CR10S source code, so I hope to see better things in the future regarding that. Hopefully Creality will be on board as a good neighbor again. And um, as a little sneak peek, um, I purchased these with my own money. These were not given to me. I have Ender 3. So you'll be seeing an Ender 3 review probably in about a week and a half or so. Not next week, week after. I'll have done enough prints on it by then that I'll be able to post the video. Because I don't like posting a video until I've used it a little bit, at least a little bit. And also Ender 3 coming. I also have two coming from Creality, but this one I got from Smarty and they shipped it fast for me. So I think there's one other person who already has one as well. So that'll be fun. That is basically a i3 sized printer, but it's all in one. So the control box, electronics, and power supply are all mounted to the frame. And it's got dual verticals, more like an i3. And But it has an expanded print volume, 220 by 220 by 250. That's nice. So um, the look of the printer, I almost want to call it a micro G Max. It's got a a GMAX-esque kind of look to it, but of course it's a small i3 print volume. So maybe we'll call this the, the Chinese Micro GMAX. <laughs> That's it. Thank you very much. Don't forget to check out the links down below. My Patreon is down there for monthly support. My PayPal is down there for one-time support. I got links to the different um, filament manufacturers and different things that I've used. Um, my profiles are down there, so if you want to Try one of my Simplify 3D profiles or some of my G-code from some of my printers. Also, as I get these source files for the printers that I have, I will place those source files down there too. So right now, you can get the source files for the Zone Star Z5R, the TiVo Michelangelo, the CR10, and the CR10S. As I find more, I'll have the U10 one up there as soon as I find the memory card. I lost the memory card it came with. As soon as I find that, I will post it there for you guys to enjoy. You guys have a great night. Thank <laughs> you.